Hey everybody, and from the top floor of the furthest up building here in the UCLA's wonderful campus in Westwood, good evening. And for some of you, good afternoon, and yet others, good morning. From whatever part of the time, uh, from whatever time zone and part of the world you're joining us from today, welcome. I'm Brett Steele, and I'm Dean of the UCLA School of the Arts and Architecture, and I am absolutely thrilled to be here today to celebrate commencement and this extraordinary class of 2021. <laughs> Rituals like this one, this commencement, always bring foremost to mind the topic of time. Given the extraordinary time in which we've all found ourselves this past year, I think it's fair to say we've all probably learned some new things, not only about ourselves, but also about time. For example, we're sharing and experiencing this commencement across a world of different screens, devices, and time zones in ways that few of us could have ever imagined not so long ago. A year ago amidst the pandemic and a mere two weeks after the brutal and reprehensible murder of George Floyd, I stood here and acknowledged those horrors while also welcoming and celebrating 2020's graduates in this school's first ever live virtual commencement. At that point, I don't think any of us could have ever fully imagined that one full year later, I would be standing here again in my office on the top floor of an empty Broad Arts Center, opening this school's second live virtual commencement and again, celebrating the incredible accomplishments of this school's newest graduates. I suppose if there's one thing in particular that we've all learned this past year, it is just how truly extraordinary it is, this thing we all call time. This past year, nearly all of our daily routines and habits have changed and have had to change. And alongside those changes, our experience of the passage of time itself has changed. So I'm wondering if we can all just take a moment here and think again of all the different rhythms of activity, all the different time signatures that brought each of us to this commencement today. Think of, all, think of the all-consuming attention that all of your critical projects, your assignments, your works of art have demanded of you and demanded of your total focus and your total, total commitment. Think, too, of the accumulation of all of those separate, discrete, past projects and moments of learning, all of those assignments, those performances, papers, pinups, and critiques, all those hours, days, and weeks, and months of learning during your time here in this school. Depending on your program of study, your journeys here began two or three or even more years ago, not to mention the years of education and incredible, beautiful lived experiences that preceded your arrival here at UCLA. Think, and think above all, of all that time. Think of your own personal timelines as well as our parallel timelines that have brought us all together here in this moment. And think, too, of those who joined you and supported you on your journeys. Your classmates, your teachers, your friends, your family, your loved ones. Think of what your time, what this ceremony also means to them and why they are so, so proud of you all here today. Because this time is also their time. It's an absolute commencement tradition to say that what we celebrate here today isn't the ending of something so much as the beginning. And up to this point, your wonderful student lives have been filled above all with the steady rhythms of academic life itself. Your time has been organized and structured and scheduled and choreographed by quarters and years and midterms and final presentations, by credit hours, by upper and lower division courses. But from today, time is gonna start doing some pretty weird and unusual things for all of you. You're gonna find that time starts to stretch out. It's gonna become more elastic and maybe even 
just a bit more malleable. Something that you can shape and bend on your own terms, which I know you'll all be doing across an entire lifetime. And without the familiar structures that have dictated how your time is spent, it'll now be so much more up to each and every one of you to determine how best to use your time and how to use it in ways that I know and I absolutely know will be as original and unique as each and every one of you graduates already are. As time, in a very real sense, from this day forward becomes your lifetimes. But let's go back for just a moment to the here and now. And with mention of maybe the most obvious of 2021 things. You have all endured and overcome so much to be here today, most especially during these past unbelievable, incredible 15 months. All of us here today know that your vision and your creativity will carry you forward into projects, into careers, and indeed into futures that none of us here, none of us here today can begin to fully imagine. But, I know will lead to change and change around not only your lives, but all of those lives that you touch. It is absolutely true that the world needs the work you will be making. It needs the art, the change, and the knowledge each of you will create and continue to create. So on behalf of all our faculty, all our staff and all of the other students making up this incredible school at this particular moment in time, congratulations to each and every one of you, the graduates of the UCLA School of the Arts and Architecture's class of 2021. Thank you. It is now my distinct honor to introduce this year's keynote speaker. He's an artist and an advocate for social and criminal justice reform like none other. He is someone who has persevered and triumphed in the face of unthinkable hardship and someone whose own life circumstances have meant he has had, to say the least, a lot of time to think about time. And in ways and in circumstances, few of us will ever be able to imagine. Fulton Leroy Washington. The artist better known to many as Mr. Wash was born in Louisiana and raised in the greater Los Angeles area, in Watts, in Gardena, and in Compton. Mr. Wash took an early liking to art as a child, and as he's often said to many, he learned to repair just about anything while he was growing up. By high school, he had founded his own business, a handyman service and was working with members of his community all around him. In 1996, Mr. Wash was running a successful repair and construction business when he was arrested and convicted on nonviolent drug offenses. He fought those charges then and to this day continues to fight to prove his innocence. And because of the mandatory minimum sentencing guidelines of that era, our speaker today was sent to prison to serve two simultaneous life sentences. And it was in prison where Mr. Wash taught himself to paint and where he commenced his artistic practice. In dangerous, unpredictable, and unforgiving places, Mr. Wash painted portraits that are incredibly tender, emotional, emotional and humane. His artistic gifts quickly earned him the respect and admiration of his fellow inmates, who he sometimes depicted in his paintings, in settings related to their lives, and in places far from the prisons where they serve time. In 2016, after 21 years in three different prisons, then-President Barack Obama commuted Mr. Wash's sentence. Since his release, Mr. Wash has gone on to start a fashion line and is creating a nonprofit to help incarcerated artists everywhere. And of course, he continues to paint. Several of his works are currently on view at our Hammer Museum. 
and at the Huntington as part of this year's Made in LA 2020 exhibition. And if you can, I absolutely encourage you to see this extraordinary artist paintings in person. Please, please take the time. Mr. Wash has also designed this year's commencement program, which will be mailed to each of our graduates, along with some very special gifts, which he himself will tell you about in a moment. Mr. Wash has led a truly remarkable life, and he is absolutely one of the most inspiring individuals and artists I have ever encountered and had an opportunity to learn from. He has so much wisdom to share about life, about the power of art to inspire change, and why it's so important to make the most of the time each of us has. Everybody, please join me in welcoming Mr. Wash. Thank you, thank you, Dean Steele. Good afternoon. My name is Fulton Leroy Washington. I'm a self-taught artist who learned to paint with oil while serving a federal sentence for a crime I did not commit. I'm honored to be here and be your commencement speaker. And I give honor to God for blessing me with his expanded freedom beyond the prison walls to address you here today. I'd like to also acknowledge and thank Dean Brett Steele, Associate Deans Victoria Marks and Laura McCarthy, the Assistant Dean Michael Chung, and all of the leadership of the school with a very, very special thanks to Anna Marie Burke and her team for getting me here today, to the parents and the loved ones of these extraordinary students, the undergrads and the grads who make up this definitely very special arts and architecture class of 2021. Thank you for having me. I come before you following a unique path of education, having gained knowledge and having learned through experience one of life's most valuable lessons. Time is your most valuable asset. Please repeat that after me. Time is your most valuable asset. Out of all the things that you can obtain in this life, time is the only thing that you cannot get back. You can replace your phone, your clothes, your car, your house, your job, career, your health, and even your education, but you cannot replace time. Once it's passed, it's gone forever. My advice to you is don't waste time. Use your time to benefit others, and others will benefit you. You are the creators of the future. So I want to give you four points of advice. One, start early so you won't be late. You know the old cliche, the early bird gets the worm. Two, get prepared and stay prepared. Never stop learning or continuing to educate yourself. Three, know what you'll do next. Don't go to sleep unless you know what you're gonna wake up for. And four, the only way to predict the future is to create the future. Don't dismiss or abandon your creative ideas. They are the reality. I now want to share my personal story with you and another piece of advice. Do not let life's circumstances dictate the use of your time. You can be in this world and not of it. I'm sure 
you all will face difficult and challenging times ahead. Your time is yours to spend as you choose. I was falsely accused, wrongfully convicted, and sentenced to life in federal prison without the possibility of parole. I chose to be optimistic in a life of despair. I believed in the legal system and that one day I would be freed. See, I believe that faith without works is dead. So with my faith, I continue to work towards a better future. The confinement that I suffered only held my physical body, but could not capture my mind or my desire to learn, be creative, and to share with others. Realizing that I would be a senior citizen by the time I got out, I quickly decided to pursue art as an activity that would allow me to be creative, to support my legal fight to prove my innocence, and provide me with the career once I returned to the streets. I didn't stop there. I found myself in new worlds being housed in three different prisons, three different states, with three different groups of inmates, amongst three different communities, all living in fear, in need of hope and guidance into a new way of thinking and a new purpose in life. I decided to lead by example. I was blessed to share my gift as an artist and use my art as a way of communicating. My paintings told the stories of my fight through the legal system, recording history for fairness and criminal justice reform. I became the art instructor at every institution I was housed. Through my sharing of self knowledge, experience and skills, many of the inmates found hope in a new purpose in life as they pursued their individual fields of interest. Some became writers, some legal scholars, group leaders, better parents, and even artists. Some, like myself, also became advocates for criminal justice reform. We physically exist, exist we physically exist in a binary world, a world of days and nights, hot and cold, Right and wrong, this or that, students and teachers, creators and consumers. But you, you, in selecting arts and architecture, chose to be creators. You are the future of the world. The world needs creators, artists, architects, dancers, choreographers, makers and designers of all kinds to fashion our future. I believe that it is you in this world that have been chosen to redirect what this world will look and function like in the future. Your education in arts and architecture prepares you to create the world as you envision it. A world in balance with nature that is able to expand in population without decay and prejudice. A world with safe, reusable energy. A world in which housing and transportation and products that we make don't just consume energy, but have the capability to produce energy from nature. Imagine that the exterior of cars and trucks harness the sun and the wind as reusable energy. A world where Surfaces of cargo containers are lined with solar panels to supplement energy, that, to supplement the energy that it takes to transport the cargo. Imagine that. Imagine a world in which personal human transportation, say the car, is not limited to the ground, but gives you the choice whether to drive, fly, or go beneath the sea. Imagine that your personal energy transports you anywhere that you want to be. A world where humans are living off 
planet while still supporting this world. A new way of thinking is especially important right now as we transcend to the 21st century into saving our planet while exploring the galaxy for new worlds to share. No, I didn't say new worlds to conquer. You can use your creativity and your art to communicate your truth, your vision, your ideas for the future, to teach us all a better, kind of more equitable, sustainable way of being in the world. UCLA Arts Class of 2021, I made two special gifts for you that you will receive in the mail in the coming weeks. One would be a t-shirt in remembrance of this day. And the other is a time chart bookmark that allows you to reference your age to how many years you have already lived compared to how many days that you have left to be creative. The chart, which you should be able to see on the screen right now, explains that if you live to be 100 years old, you only get 36,500 days. When using the time chart, keep in mind that there are only 24 hours in each day. And it's up to you to choose what you do with them regardless of how long you live. I advise you to use the time chart with your calendar to set your daily, weekly, and monthly activities. Use it to set your short, midterm, and long-term goals. Try to plan your life and your careers out at least five years at a time. If you can, and reference the chart to see if your goals are being met daily and whether your days are good days or bad compared to the goals that you set. While never forgetting the past, it's up to us, the creative minds of our time, to share and record our thoughts and our ideas to help sustain the future. It is also important that your creativity and your work never stop. You must not let the circumstances and pressures of this life suppress your creative imagination because your imagination is our future. If you fail to create, we fail to grow. If we fail to grow, we soon fail to exist. Time is your most valuable asset. Be selective, thoughtful, and careful how you spend it. Don't waste time. Go from here and create the future. Keep your bookmarks in your mind. Use it throughout the days of your life as a reminder that time is a gift and it's your greatest asset. Make the world a better place to live for yourself, for your children, and society by using your educational training to help others. For me, today was a good day. Thank you all for sharing your time with me. Congratulations, UCLA Arts Class of 2021. Thank you. Mr. Wash, thank you. Yes. yes thank you. Ma'am. Yes. And it thank you for making it a good day for us. It was awesome. a, it's a blessing to be here. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. Thank you for your words, yeah. your wisdom, and on a day like today, thanks. Thank you for the time. Thank you. Absolutely extraordinary. So I'd like a moment here to thank and recognize all of our members of faculty. The spirit, the dedication, the empathy, and the resilience with which each of you, every last one of you, have met the challenges of this past 15 months especially has just been inspiring beyond words. I am proud to be your colleague and collaborator, and thank you, along with everybody else and all of our graduates, for the brilliant efforts and service throughout this year and always. You, our faculty, are the heart and soul of this institution, of this school, and you play an immeasurable role in the lives and success of our students and our graduates. Thank you. 
I'd like here also, of course, to acknowledge the incredible contributions made by our devoted staff here in the school who have helped to make today's celebration possible and all of the days and months and weeks before so, so successful in leading into today's event. And our departmental and school counseling staff especially who have worked tirelessly and throughout this year of all years to ensure that our students have been supported in every imaginable way and to be able to reach this culminating moment in each of their lives. Thank you all so, so much. So I'm pleased to present the 2021 graduate student speaker for the School of the Arts and Architecture. This honor rotates every year to one of the departments in our school and this year we have a graduate speaker from the Department of World Arts and Culture's Dance. It is my great, great pleasure to introduce Cara Janelle Wade. Greetings to the 2021 graduating class y los estudiantes de la Escuela de Arts and Architecture. Allow me to first acknowledge our presence on the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territory of the Gabrielino Tongva people. As a land-grant institution, we pay our respects to our ancestors, elders, and relatives, past, present, and emerging. My name is Karen Janelle Wade, and I honor the direct lineage through my Baba and Ia, my father, Dr. Eugene H.P. Wade, and my mother, Mrs. Portia Battle Wade. Over the past year and a half, we have persevered through some of the most unprecedented challenges our generation has seen. We have experienced a global pandemic, social uprisings, and a divided political climate, all of which have altered our personal journeys here at UCLA. Yet and still, we rise. We rose above social isolation, the shift to a virtual world, and the need to unmute every time we desire to speak. You, my colleagues, have done the unthinkable. And through it all, you have finished strong. The ability to shift, recover in a crisis, and to face adversity head on, that is resilience, which deserves to be celebrated. I think back on the milestones when the resilience of my ancestors shifted the trajectory of American history and the challenges they faced while turning dreams into realities during their academic tenures. Reflecting back on the suffrage march of 1913, when my sorors of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated united to fight for women's rights to vote. And the ways in which Mary McLeod Bethune utilized her studies to manifest institutions for her people. I pay homage to the four a and Aggies who initiated the Woolworth sit-ins in 1960 in my hometown of Greensboro, North Carolina, along with Ruby Bridges, whose bravery initiated public school integration at just six years old. I acknowledge Dr. Angela Davis, whose education progressed into serving as an iconic activist, and every collegiate student who sacrificed their safety as a freedom writer through the southern belly of this nation. I honor every king and queen who has answered the call to dismantle white supremacy, discrimination, and institutionalized racism, which in turn has allowed many of us to succeed in higher education today. As a graduate of UCLA's Department of World Arts and Culture slash Dance in the School of Arts and Architecture, I am grateful to be among creatives and visionaries who see the bigger picture and envision a brighter future. The participation in protests, petitions, leadership, and unity among our class is monumental in seeing a continued change for the generations to come. And I salute us all for being committed to the revolution. Celebrating our diverse backgrounds, professions, lifestyles, and creed, I believe we each possess the power to be iconic in our destinies. The path that has been set before you comes with a torch set ablaze, and I encourage you to charge forward as a proud Bruin that you have become. To every professor, department chair, dean, and mentor who saw the potential in our artistry and greatness, I say thank you. Thank you for your support, guidance, and the opportunity to grow in an environment that has challenged us to tap into our greatness. In the words of Nina Simone, as an artist, it is our duty to reflect the times. And at this time, I have seen our crafts flourish in activism, pride, and on the front lines to advocate for our communities. We each have a role to play, and those roles led us to UCLA for a divine purpose. 
as we are each uniquely and wonderfully made, be proud of yourselves for the accomplishment that you've made today. There is a torch with your name on it and a trail to blaze. So hold your head high, go forth in the world, and as a proud Bruin alumni, I say congratulations and I pray that you continue to rise. Kara, KJ, thank you so, so much. Now, I'm pleased to present the 2021 undergraduate student speaker for the School of the Arts and Architecture. As with our graduate student speaker, this honor rotates each year to one of the departments in our school. And this year, our speaker has been selected by the Department of Architecture and Urban Design. Please welcome Charlie Andrews. I am honored to speak today on behalf of the undergraduate class of the School of Arts and Architecture, and I would like to begin by congratulating my fellow graduates on their achievements. I would also like to extend our gratitude to all those who have made it possible for us to be here today. Our parents, friends, family, faculty, and especially our professors, who have also had to make the difficult transition to an online environment. I know we're all probably tired of hearing this, but the past year really has been difficult and we should all be proud of ourselves for graduating, which is a great accomplishment even without a global pandemic looming over us. And while I wish we were celebrating together in person, I feel certain that we will see each other again. I have no doubt that we've all come to realize that subjects like art, music, architecture, and the performing arts are very difficult to teach, evaluate, and accomplish remotely. So once more, I would like to thank our educators and departments for all their efforts in adapting their curriculum and congratulate us for persisting throughout an incredibly challenging chapter of our lives, personal and academic. As an architectural studies student, I have come to learn that your work is never done, whether you're attempting something small like drawing a plan site or something much larger like furthering your education. I'm sure we've all presented what we think is a complete and perfect product only to be met with a list of changes to make for next time. At first, this process was daunting and more than a little disheartening, especially because I've yet to meet an artist or architect who isn't personally attached to their work. However, I've come to realize that through this process, this continuous critique, we've all been conditioned to never settle, to want to excel, and to always search for ways to improve, which are traits that I know will serve us well as we begin our professional careers or continue our academic ones. It's hard to realize that our time as UCLA students is coming to a close. I know that more than anything, I will miss my classmates, some of whom I count as my closest and dearest friends. The small nature of our classes and our many shared experiences have fostered a close sense of community. It's easy to become friends with people that you see nearly every day, regardless of whether you see them in person or through your computer. And the collaborative environment of studio classes creates lifelong connections. There's no better bonding experience than teaching someone the hidden options of a rhino command. Personally, I know my friendships have been strengthened by stressful midterm pinups, long hours and shared meals spent in our Perloff studio, and now through our long distance learning experience, all of which I'll remember fondly. I wish you all the best in your future endeavors. The world is what we will make it to be, and I believe it is in excellent hands. Congratulations. Charlie, thank you so, so much. Each year, an undergraduate student from each of our majors in the school is chosen, based on their academic record, to serve as a chancellor's marshal at our school's commencement ceremony. The Chancellor's Marshal is an honorary designation and our marshals normally help with the logistics of our commencement event by leading the procession of students and faculty into and out of the ceremony site. We want to take a moment here to recognize our five Chancellor's Marshals from the class of 2021 for their distinguished scholastic achievements from the Department of Architecture and Urban Design, Lisa Sumiko Stewart. From the Department of Art, Louisa Edwards. From the Department of Design Media Arts, Ivy Lovett. 
from the dance major within the Department of World Arts and Cultures Dance, Hannah Ferguson. And from the World Arts and Cultures major within the Department of World Arts and Cultures Dance, Diana Rosa Castro. Graduates, before we disperse into our separate departmental sessions where your degrees will be conferred today and where I am sure much, much more merriment is in store, I want to offer my hearty congratulations and very, very best wishes for your future endeavors. I and all of us in the school so look forward to keeping in touch as you move forward and as you continue to move us forward into the future. I also very, very much look forward to coming together again in person to celebrate your many achievements, which we will absolutely do just as soon as we as a school are able to do so. And before we move into the next phase of today's ceremony, I would be remiss if we did not take a moment to acknowledge and thank the parents and grandparents and brothers and sisters and spouses partners, children, and friends of our graduates, all of whom have worked so hard and sacrificed so, so much to make today possible. Your strength and guidance have no doubt helped ensure each and every one of our graduates immense success. Thank you all. From wherever you all are joining us today across the city, indeed across the nation and entire world, we thank and applaud you all for your support and encouragement of each of our incredible, incredible graduates. Before we move on to a performance of the UCLA alma mater, I want to remind you to all make sure you know where to go next in this commencement ceremony. Graduates, faculty, and staff, you will stay right where you are. Family and friends who are not already watching the ceremony from your student's departmental YouTube video, all of you, at the conclusion of the UCLA alma mater, please make sure to follow the link for your student's departmental celebration. You should see these links on the screen shortly. And they are also listed in the FAQ on our commencement website at commencement.arts.ucla.edu. And now, please enjoy the UCLA alma mater performed for us by the voice students from the Department of Music under the direction of Professor Michael Dean. Thank you. So everybody, this concludes part one of the School of the Arts and Architecture commencement ceremony. I wish you all the very best and look forward to staying in touch in the days and in the months and indeed in the years ahead. Stay well and my best wishes to each and every one of you graduates for this summer and beyond. Thank you everybody for coming. Thank you. <laughs>